In this video we're going to see how to write down a presentation of the fundamental group of the complement of a knot. The knots we're going to look at are in so-called braid form and we'll see later that any knot can be put into braid form. So, but let's see what that means. So here's a braid. This is just a two-strand braid, very simple. We have two strands weaving in and out of each other. In the language of the previous couple of videos, this is sigma 1 cubed. In other words, we have three crossings. One, two, three. And in each, the uh, strand that's above is the one that's going from north west to southeast, like this. Okay, so that's sigma 1 cubed. So if I give you a braid like this, there's always a way to turn it into a knot in the three-dimensional space. Uh, so what you do is you cap it off using these blue strands like this. Okay, and this is called the braid closure of the braid we started with. Right, so if I trace this all the way around now, I get a knot, which in this case is uh, the trefoil knot. At least it's one of the two trefoil knots. Okay, uh, so if I say a knot is in braid position, I mean I've obtained it by taking a braid and closing it off by adding on some blue loops like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to think about this knot sitting inside a solid torus like the one I've drawn. All right, so any braid I can think of as sitting inside a cylinder like this one. And then I can, when I bring these blue strands over to cap off the knot, I can just continue that cylinder along around the back till it meets up with itself to form a torus, a solid torus. So the knot sits inside a solid torus, and the first thing I'm going to do is tell you how to find the fundamental group of that solid torus minus the knot. Okay, so let's let's call the torus uh, T. Let's call the knot K. We want to find the fundamental group of T minus K. And then from this, we're going to go on to work out the fundamental group of R3 minus K. So the way we're going to proceed is to observe that T minus K is actually a mapping torus, and we know how to find the fundamental group of a mapping torus using Van Kampen's theorem. So let me just move this guy out of the way. What's a mapping torus again? It's where you, you have some space. You multiply that space with an interval. And you glue it back to itself using some non-trivial gluing map. Let's say phi. Right, so it's a quotient space. And the space that I've drawn over here the solid torus minus the knot is clearly of this form. Let's see why. Let's now maybe uh, shrink this guy back down and bring this one back up. So why is this a mapping torus? Well, I can slice it into lots of little discs. And each disc cuts the knot at, in this case, two points. And as that disc moves around the torus, those two points also move around. So in other words, this is a mapping torus where the space we started with is the disc minus two points. And the map phi that we used to glue it back together is actually precisely the art in action of the braid that we started with. So, using um, 
the theorem we proved earlier about what the fundamental group of a mapping torus is, we get pi 1 of t minus k is well we start with the fundamental group of the space in this case the red disk minus a couple of points that we're using to form the mapping torus so in this case we just have uh, two generators in general we'll have n generators where n is the number of times that the not cuts the disk, in other words the number of strands in the braid so let's call those generators alpha 1 up to alpha n we add in a new generator say lambda which basically measures this loop as we go around the mapping torus and then we add in relations well, we, we add in relations for the fundamental group of the punctured disk. Well, there are no relations. That's a free group. So we don't need any relations just amongst the alphas. But we do need a relation for what happens if we apply lambda, alpha, k, uh, lambda, inverse. This is supposed to be phi of alpha, k, whatever this monodromy map phi was. And I was claiming that this map phi is exactly the art in action of our braid. And we've just found out how to compute art in actions in the previous video. So this gives us a way of finding the fundamental group of T minus K. Let's just do a quick example. Let's take the braid sigma 1. So what's the art in action of sigma 1? Well, we computed in the last video that it sends one generator to, uh, let's say, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 1 inverse. These were called A and B in the previous video. And it sends the other generator, alpha 2, to alpha 1. So the presentation we get is, it's got two generators, alpha 1, alpha 2, oh sorry, three generators, alpha 1, alpha 2, lambda. And two relations, lambda, alpha 1, lambda, inverse, equals alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 1, inverse, and lambda, alpha 2, lambda inverse equals alpha 1. What is the knot that we get? Well, if we close this off, you can see we're getting the unknot, but it's an unknot that sits in a solid torus in a slightly non-trivial way. And that's why we get this slightly complicated fundamental group over here. So now that we've got the fundamental group of T minus K, we want to move from the solid torus T to the three-dimensional space R3 that contains it. So here's our knot sitting inside the solid torus again. What's the difference between T minus K and R3 minus K? Well, the difference is there's this big gaping hole right in the middle of our torus. And what we'd like to do is to fill that in, as I'm doing here, with a disk. Once we've done that, it's not too hard to see that the result is homotopy equivalent to R3 minus K. So if I take T minus K and I glue in this green disk, the result is homotopy equivalent to R3 minus K. We have a prescription for how the fundamental group changes when we attach a two cell like this. All we do is add in an extra relation to the fundamental group that kills off the boundary of the disk. 
in this case the boundary of the disk is exactly this generator lambda that we had in the fundamental group of the mapping torus. So as a consequence we get the following presentation for the fundamental group of the knot complement in R3. So pi 1 of R3 minus k is generated by alpha 1 up to alpha n and now the relations are just as they were before except with no mention of lambdas. Lambda is just equal to 1. We've killed lambda. So we get alpha 1 equals phi alpha 1 all the way down to alpha n equals phi alpha n. And that's our presentation. This is called the Vertinger presentation for the fundamental group of the complement of the knot. The presentation itself depends on the particular braid we've chosen to represent our knot. Maybe you could use different braids for the same knot. So let's go back to our example on the previous slide and see what the fundamental group of the knot complement is. So here's the knot from the previous slide. We just took this braid sigma 1 and closed it off to get what you can now see is an unknot. And the fundamental group of t minus k was given this presentation, alpha 1, alpha 2, lambda, with these two relations. And to obtain pi 1 of r3 minus k, we just get rid of the generator lambda, set it equal to 1 wherever we see it, so we get two generators, alpha 1, alpha 2. And the relations are now, well, let's look at the second relation first. This says alpha 2 equals alpha 1. So uh, we actually only need one generator. And the first relation says alpha 1 equals alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 1 inverse. But that certainly follows if alpha 2 equals alpha 1, because this is just saying alpha 1 is the same as alpha 1 times alpha 1 divided by alpha 1. So in other words, this group really just has one, one generator and no relation. So we get Z, which is the fundamental group of the complement of the unknot. So you can do some more non-trivial examples by yourself using what we already worked out about the art in action of braids on three groups and using the Vertinger presentation that we've just seen.